so you do need to work on uh, different items that your dog has to go under. One thing that you got to realize about dogs is that they don't generalize very well. So what that means is the last chair I had was brown and had a blue cover. And if you use only that chair with doing something like the unders, that's what the dog's going to associate it with. He's going to be like, nope, nope, I only do this under thing with that chair. So you do have to practice different chairs, different things. If wheelchairs are involved, you do have to practice with the wheelchair. It just looks different to your dog. And sometimes people think it's like, well, it's a chair. It is different to your dog. So we're going to do the same kind of thing with the wheelchair. Here, baby, look. Oh, oh, oh look. Here. Oh, oh, so you just stick the stick under there. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Come on, baby. Good girl. And again, it's fine that she doesn't go the whole way. If she sticks her head under here and I can click, she's going to start to understand that go under this thing too. And I'm not using the under command because she's not doing it yet. So all she's doing is following a paint stick. Good girl. Here, baby. Come on, looky. Sometimes you just gotta be patient. And I like the fact that she hasn't done this because it shows you guys that there's, the dogs have to figure it out. Let them figure it out. They're not gonna do it perfect to start with. Come on, baby. Ooh, where's the peanut butter? She's a little reluctant to come through these wheels. So, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of maybe open these wheels up and, okay. So anything like that can look visually different, and the dog's like, I don't know. There, good. So again, maybe I'll just feed her down here. Good girl. That's a good girl. Gonna come through. Hey, look at you. Again, it's about breaking this down into little tiny parts. You want the dog to stick his head underneath the chair. You want the dog to take a couple little steps underneath the chair. You want the dog to get all the way under there and at, at some point get him to just kind of walk back, back and forth. If you force this, the dog's gonna hate this and go, nope, not doing it, you scared me. Um, and just be patient. Little baby steps. If you have to spend two to three days to get your dog to put his head underneath a wheelchair, okay. Um, they all learn different. Um, they all perceive things differently. So again, just going to be, now I'm tapping it so she'll look down. Good. Yay. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Yay. That's a good girl. Again, we're not saying under until she does this really easy. I'm going to hold her back. Good girl. Good girl. Yay. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Yay. That's a girl. Once you get that going, then you can start working on, you know, you sitting down, moving your feet. And I'll show you guys, those of you that either can't move your legs or, or have prosthetics or whatever, um, you know, we work on the dog going around the back of the chair and coming under. So <clears throat> the other thing that you need to work on, whether it's a regular chair or a wheelchair or whatever you've got, is the dog circling around the chair. So it's go around and you can just, again, <clears throat> I like using the stick because it's just an extension of your arm. And it's very hard or impossible for you to kind of feed the dog in the different positions. So, all right, so I'm just gonna sit down. I'm gonna kind of let her follow the stick, passing the stick behind my back. Yay, good girl. Now, if you can't do that, you might have to um, do this like if you can't bend your shoulders that far back because this is a pretty good stretch. So if you've got bad shoulders or uh, replacement shoulders, whatever, uh, you might have to try this a little differently. So I would stand right next to the chair and I would just bring the dog around. Good girl, good girl. And then I just turn myself around, around. So around, good girl, there you go. And then I go the other way, around, go around. Good girl, yay, good girl. The reason for that is at some point, we're gonna bring her from in front, go around, around, stop, here. Good girl, good girl. Because if you're in a wheelchair and you've got the foot, the, the 
what are they called? <laughs> they're just the foot extensions, they're like they're, they're the step in front that you put your feet in. Um, if those are here, the dog can't do this from the front. He has to do it from behind the chair. Good. So when, if you're in a chair most of the time and you say under, the dog is actually going to go around behind your chair. Uh, Patrick, I think, um, you know, either way, honey, is fine. So, you know, you can have him go around or you can have him do under. But uh, if you're working with other people that don't have that ability, so let's say we've got our feet here and we're not moving so good, she would have to go behind. But now she's got that idea of getting back there and then coming under. Okay. So if you're in a chair um, and you do under, it's the dog has to get to the back of the chair and lay underneath your chair. And then they have to back out. Come on, let's go. So you'd bring them out and around when you say let's go because they can't come forward. Okay, so what we're also going to start to work on um, your dog getting next to you, next to the wall. Uh, so <clears throat> sometimes when you go places, the chairs you won't be able to have the dog go underneath the chair. Um, any of the chairs that have the cross pieces underneath, there's no room for the dog. So you're gonna have to ask the dog to get next to you. So any kind of tidy, tiny spaces, sometimes the dogs don't like the pressure. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you have to teach your dog to kind of come through. Come baby, here. See, she doesn't really like it. Come here, baby. Good girl, good, there you go, good. So I'm just gonna just, Put her right there. Good girl. That's a girl. And she can either back out. I don't care. Um, and we're going to work on this a couple of times to see how she feels about being that tight to the wall. Good. Good. Now, some dogs, you're going to have to move this chair out. So she's a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to move away. One of the things that to get your brain thinking like a trainer, what are you actually working on? So in our case, I really want to show you uh, how this dog can go around the chair and end up between you and the wall. But trainer Norma says, uh-oh, I didn't work enough with this dog in tight spaces because she's a little bit hesitant about getting in there. So you have to stop and you have to go, what do I need to work on? I need to have a dog that is comfortable going underneath a chair, going around a chair, and going between a chair and the wall. Those three things have to happen first before I include the chair and the wall. So sometimes when your dog isn't doing something, you have to look at are they doing all the pieces individually before you put it all together. It's really important. So I just moved the chair away to get her to be a little bit more comfortable. There are dogs that really don't like tiny spaces and we just have to work on it. So she's not too bad, but there are dogs out there that might not like that. So I'm going to get her to turn around in that little tiny spot. Good girl. Good girl. Release. Okay. And all I'm going to do is just tar target her back there. You guys don't even have to have a leash on, but I'm just going to bring her in. Good. I'm going to turn her nose in towards me and try to get her. Yay. Good girl. So turn around in that. Okay, so we're going to work on getting her next to your side by just following the stick. Turn her nose in towards you and then go for sit. So just lift your stick up, sit, sit. Yes, good girl, good job. And then maybe a down, down, nope, not gonna do it. Okay, let's try again. Again, I'm pushing a little bit. What am I really working on? I'm really working on bringing her back, turning her around and having her to sit. And I had to get all fancy and throw a down in there when I'm supposed to be working just on this. So break it down a little bit, and then at some point we're going to get her into that down. Okay? So we're going to put the stick up, and we're going to go back to using our hand. Also, if you, if you don't have a lot of movement, um, your assistant or whoever's going to be your aide and, and helping you train your dog can use this and just they are the ones that are using the target but you're sitting in your chair and you're the one that's giving the commands so you know they would be using the stick and just helping you with that part of this good girl good girl Release. Okay, so we're switching back from the um, the target stick or the lure stick um, into just having treats in my hands. Now, um, having treats in your hand, uh -uh, I don't mind people having treats in their hands because to me, food can be a big distraction. 
she knows I have it, but she's not allowed to grab it out of my hand. She's not allowed to get overly excited. So she has to learn to earn these. So again, don't worry right now when you're teaching anything new about having treats available 100% of the time. I'm gonna show you guys how to go into random reinforcement. But I now I'm switching from the stick to just a treat in my hand. So you may have to tell your dog, um, you, know, you know, motion for the dog to get over here. So it's this way, turning around, and sit. Good. Yay. So you're kind of like a, a little seal here with your flipper going out to the side. So it's com coming out. Turn the nose in, up over the head, and sit. And then this time, I'm just going to ask for lie down. Good. Good. There it is. Good. Now she's just going to have to wait a minute. So that's the whole behavior. Go from front to heel, because it's my left side to sit to lie down between the chair and the wall. Good girl, that's a good girl. And then she gets rewarded for that, okay? Then release. Front is in front of you. This is your front. Good, front. And you can start just calling that as you do it as well. And then this time, I'm gonna take her off leash here so I don't have to deal with the leash. Okay, and just use the clicker. Now you're gonna put treats in both hands. So I'm gonna have a treat in my right hand, a treat in my left hand. I'm gonna bring her around, touch your hands behind your back. Okay, so I'm gonna show you uh, what's going on behind my back so you can see. Got treats in both hands. She's following my hand around. I'm touching my fingers back here. I'm making a fist with this hand. I'm picking her up over here. Sit, sit, come on, sit. Come on, sit. <laughs> She's like, now. Okay, see how it makes a difference when you change something? Watch what she does when we go back. She got a little comfy with this. She's like, I can do that. All right? This is where people get a little confused or, or a little frustrated with dogs. I changed it. Her brain said it's not the same. So until I show her that it is a behavior and it's a behavior that I want and it's a behavior that she's going to get reinforced for, they're going to act like, you know, people would say, it's like, what's wrong with her? I just, I just did that. You just sat before, I changed it on her. Just remember guys, most veterans don't like change. Dogs don't like change either. So you have to say, you can do this. And instead of like what happens sometimes is people will do over here and then they'll ask for a go around. And if the dog doesn't sit right away, they're like, sit, what's the matter with you? Ugh, right? I get that. But again, she doesn't know what the heck I'm asking. So one of the things that you do have to remember is if you work your dog facing this direction and the wall is on my left hand side, I have to do this the other direction as well. And I have to start over again. Those of you that have worked horses, I'm sure you have heard the expression, you gotta work the right side of the horse's brain and the left hand side of the horse's brain. Um, it just simply means that if you're working on the right side and you're te teaching a whole behavior on the right side, you have to turn it around and work them on the other side. The, it doesn't cross over in their little brain. You have to work through it. And your dog is left-sided or right-sided, just like we are. The way ha that you can tell if your dog's right-sided or left-sided is look at the way he turns in his crate. So when you put him in his kennel, does he turn to his right or does he turn to his left? Just like people, most dogs are right-sided, but I've had many dogs that are left-sided. That simply means that if he turns, come here. So let me see if I can get her to turn. Come here, baby. So turning okay there. Now, what if I go this way? They're always gonna turn a little better one way or the other. So this would be her left. Good. And this would be her right. Good. Okay, so again, it, it does make a difference. They're gonna be, some dogs are very, very awkward to the left. They almost fall over when you try to do it. Okay, so it just depends on um, what you're doing with your dog. Please remember, do this with different types of chairs in between the wall. Um, the other thing that you can practice is getting your dog, oh, you got me cake on, thank you. Getting your dog to go around between the wall and the chair and then come under. So I've changed positions with the chair. I have put the back of the chair by the wall. Are you interested in that? Good girl. Um, 
And so I'm going to just do my whole go around. No, 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 no. Good. Yay. That a girl. And I'm going to bring her the other way. So just going to make this super easy. Can she actually get back there? Is she comfortable getting back there? Which she is. Good girl. And then I'm going to want her to go behind and then under. Baby, come on. Come on. Come here. Can't see you. Come here. Where are you? Good girl. Good girl. Yay. Good girl. Again, just go under and not worry about, you know, if she's laying down or where under. And then I got to put my other hand down here and I'm patting the top bottom of the chair. Now she's still licking that, which I really don't care. Come here, baby. Hey, come on. Come here. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Yay. And I've got, you know, treats in this hand. So that's how I would work on under where they have to go to the wall and come underneath the chair. And once you get all of these positions, like the next time we bring her out, you know, she's just getting familiar with being under and what the heck we want to do and, and being rewarded for and relaxed. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, that a girl, come on. Good girl. Once we get all of those positions down where she's going around, going through, going under, um, then we can start working on the command under and lie down. So just take this super slow. Every dog is going to be different. Uh, Richard and I, Richard's the, the videographer, Richard and I were, and also a veteran with a dog, Joy. Um, we were just talking about, you know, dog training's not perfect. And, and the internet likes to show you um, this is how your dog should look when you get done with all this training. Or aren't I a great trainer and I can make this dog look amazing? You've got to show the process. And, and the dog is going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. So what? It doesn't matter. You're just working on a process a little bit at a time. The nice thing about this kind of training, guys, is if you make a mistake, what's the worst thing that can happen? You click at the wrong time or you feed your dog at the wrong time. If you do compulsion-based training, which is con, you know, based on correction, if you correct at the wrong time and if you correct hard enough, you can actually set yourself back two weeks, a month. Sometimes you'll get a dog that's been corrected so much that they just quit. So that's the reason that, first of all, I like a thinking dog. I like a dog that actually goes, oh, that's what you want me to do. And the other part about correction is you have to keep doing it. It's, it's under the threat of, of being corrected. Um, so again, we didn't buy our dogs for that reason or we didn't get our dogs for that reason. Not saying that there's never a time that you're gonna correct them, but not when they're learning. I mean, not when they're, trying to correct her right now would scare her. She's a really sweet, soft dog. She likes to do this, but she's soft. She's very gentle. So if I were to correct her for doing it wrong, when she doesn't even know what she's doing, it would set me back a long way. So take your time with this and you know, just start working on um, you know, under the table, under your legs, under a chair, and then we'll work on stays. So it's getting them to go under something, then it's getting them to lie down, then it's getting the down stay. If you don't have a down stay, you really can't you know, work on this exercise.